Good morning, my name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a technical trainer for McNeil. This is Getting Started Rhino for Mac. And I posted a Windows video recently about using SubD to build a car. And one of the comments I got from one of the, the users um, was kind of like, yeah, this is really cool, but I'd really like to see you do something like a ski boot. And I thought that would be insane to try and, alive, try and do in a live demo. Nobody in their right mind would do that. <clears throat> And then I get to thinking about it and I was like, um, okay, let's, let's give it a rip. Um, I've made a fool of myself publicly in the past, so I've got no problems doing that. So let's, let's give it a shot and see what we can do. This is a super, super ambitious build and full disclosure. I did actually pre-build something, which I normally don't do. I did build the buckle structure in here because I wanted to focus on the boot and the detailing of the boot itself. And I figured that trying to throw the buckle in there on top of it was probably just setting myself up for disaster. So I'm, I'm going to give this a shot. This could be an absolute uh, sandwich in a fan, but let's see what we can do. I, I'm going to try and pull this off in about an hour. Um, if it goes long, you're welcome to bail out and I will just keep going until I'm done and then I'll post the video and then you can watch the ruination of my artistic soul <laughs> fall apart right in front of your eyes, um, live on video. So, um, with that said, let's get into this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do this in sub D because, um, sub D in Rhino 7 is like one of the biggest gifts that, that footwear uh, designers have ever been given by the McNeil team ever. And it, it really makes this whole lower, especially something that becomes easy to do. And there's two ways to do it. We can do it from the top view and we can basically like trace out the, the shape of the foot and then extrude up. And I'm making an up shape with my hands that you can't see because no one needs to see my camera. Um, or in this case, because this is the only drawing we have, right? And it's the only drawing we were given. Somebody handed us this and said, build it. And, um, and so we have to figure out kind of how to pull this off from the side view. And so the first thing that I want to make sure that everybody's aware of this is rule of three, because we're going to talk about that a lot. And rule of three, if you haven't seen it, there is a video that I'm going to put in the chat. Um, this one that is um, talks about rule of three, but rule of three basically simply stated is it takes three points or three edges to make a corner or transition. So this is gonna be our anchor. This is gonna be one, two, three, and then this is gonna be our anchor out here. So the parts that we're focused on are these three points right here. And if we move these points closer together, that corner gets tighter, right? And if we move these points farther apart, that corner gets looser. And that's essentially the idea that we're going to talk about anytime that we're turning a corner, whether it's this way or whether it's this way or, or whatever direction, whether we're going in and out, it's always going to be three. Now, we can steal a point from a previous curve or from a previous corner. So if we do one, two, three, we can do something like this, right? And you're saying, well, that's only got one point in the corner, but it actually doesn't. One, two, three makes up this transition. One, two, three makes up this transition. One, two, three makes up that transition and so on, all right? So we can steal a point from other, from other transitions. However, if we do that, then when we modify the transition, right it modifies the the other transition as well because that comes with it because we're sharing that point so both of the transitions change if you don't want them to change you need an extra point in between here to isolate them all right so that's a very important kind of concept to understand as we get going in this and i always try and talk about this a little bit because rule three is just it's the basis of doing sub modeling and all that kind of stuff so um someone said i disappeared um, does the screen, screen look okay? Good? Okay. 
So we're going to get started on this. I'm going to just jump in, and I usually do a little chalk talk, and I draw over the part, and um, and uh, and and I'm not going to do that this time just for time's sake because I think I'm going to be up against it as far as time is concerned. Um, will we get the drawing? Um, it, there's not a really good way to share the drawing on on YouTube, so the best way to do it here, I'll 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 let it set there without being move for a little bit so that you could screenshot it in the video. So grab a screenshot of that and then just use use that for the uh, use that for the lesson. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to start on the bottom and I'm going to think about this a little bit as I go, right? And I'm going to start with a single plane and I'm going to do just one single plane out here like this. I'm going to switch to box mode cuz I do all my modeling in box mode. And I'm going to shift command drag to grab this corner and I'm going to just start. Actually, this is a four piece plane and I don't want that. I just want a single, so I'm going to get rid of all of this. All right, shift control drag to get this point and I'm going to just drag it in place. And we're going to kind of think about this thing has a shape that's kind of got a bone line that goes kind of through here. There's a transition kind of top to bottom, right? It kind of rolls over this way and under this way. And then it's also got a couple of transitions. It kind of peaks here and then rolls under. And then it, the low point is kind of underneath here somewhere. And then we've got another high point kind of right here. So if we're looking at this in top view, this thing goes kind of out, in, out, and then back in again, right? So, and then from the bottom, it's going to kind of roll from the bottom to the top. So we want to kind of keep that in mind as we're doing this. And so I'm going to shift command click this edge and I'm going to just drag it over here. And then I'm going to drag another edge here another one here and another one back here now that might not be enough information but it's going to get us started and i'm going to just drag the basics on this one of the things that's important to remember about subview is it's is is you want to use as few points as possible you want to go as as simple as you possibly can and so what we're going to do is just kind of follow that idea and see how far we can get. Now, I can already see that if I pull this point up, right, it's starting to pull away from this line down here. So that tells me I'm probably going to need another edge in here. So let's just throw a couple more edges in here because it's already become super apparent how, you know, where we're going to need to put stuff. So I'm going to put one kind of right here, and then I'm going to put another one kind of over in here. And that gives me the ability now to be able to poke that down there and kind of pull this over here. And then let's kind of keep it fairly organized, go over there. Now there's a detail here. We're not gonna deal with that right at the moment. We're gonna, we're gonna kind of think about that later. And now we need to deal with, you know, this transition kind of coming over this phone line. I'm gonna delete that so we don't need it anymore. So I'm going to grab this entire edge. I'm going to click the two sides and then double click in the middle. And I'm just going to extrude straight up. And I'm going to come up high, kind of like that, maybe somewhere in there. And I need to kind of predict how much space I'm going to need to roll over the top, right? Because we're making the side of this shoe. And then we're going to get the transition over the top and around the front, which means I probably need to pull this back a little bit. So we actually need to leave a little gap around this little chunk we're building so that we can make the shape that we want to make, but that we have enough room to also build the faces that are going to wrap around and connect us on the other side. Now, for speed's sake, I'm going to make this thing symmetrical um, just because I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to have a complete demo as opposed to an accurate demo. And I always figure like if I get a shoe, if I get a footwear designer or something in the audience who, who is paying enough attention to get upset at my workflow, then I've engaged them in the content and they're going to go and, and try it anyways and then prove what an idiot I am, um, which is fine. I'm okay with that. <laughs> it's not the first time I've been 
called an idiot. <laughs> but the, the, the key is that you will have, you will have actually started using it. And that is the goal. So, um, I don't mind offending you into trying this. That's fine too. I'm okay with that. Ideally, I'd, I'd rather have you be excited and happy, but you know, whatever. So I'm going to start kind of sculpting a little bit of shape into here, and I'm just going to pull this out a little bit. And I'm going to pull this out a little bit. And that's going to give me, if I go to shaded mode, that's going to give me this kind of shape. And you can see that this line here, I'm probably going to just pull it out a little bit, and that's going to start giving me my, giving me my, roll in there and then maybe you know this edge down here maybe needs to tuck under more maybe it needs to actually go under kind of something like that and so that's going to give us the basis of what we need to do this and i'm going to pull this out here i'm going to mirror it around zero i'm going to hold down shift and then i can take and essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift control click here and I'm going to come all the way back to here. And I'm going to get all of this stuff. And I'm going to bridge these. And you'll see right away kind of why I, I stuck with, um, you know, why I backed it off of the edges a little bit. I'm just going to use this with maybe two edges so that I get a center line and say apply. I'm going to grab the front of this, go back to my front view, and then I'm going to scale. And you can see my front and my back now start to appear. And then I'm going to scale in this direction using scale one. And you can see my upper kind of starts to grow out of that. Now we'll switch to wireframe and we'll do a little bit of adjusting. See what I mean about sub D being like a gift to, to footwear design? It's like trying to build this, this upper shape is, is really challenging. Um, at least for me, maybe that's just cause I'm challenged, but, um, anyway, we can work on that in therapy later. All right, so let's go and let's bring the, let's make this transition here where we come from this shape up, kind of up the barrel. And what I'm going to do is just shift control click all of these faces. And I'm just going to grab the extrude dot on the Z and I'm going to just pull it straight up. And I'm even going to just delete this because I don't really need that to be open. Right, or I don't need it to be closed. I actually kind of need it to be open. So let's go to the front view and let's adjust our shape a little bit. And I know everybody's like going, oh my God, that doesn't look anything like a ski boot. I know, settle down. You get there. So I'm gonna pull this out kind of like that. Pull this in here. And this is, this is, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give myself an out here and I'm going to say, this is a concept model. This is not a, this is not going to be like a production crazy, you know, something that we're going to send to SolidWorks or anything like that. This is going to be a concept model. This is going to be a sketch model. This is going to be something that we're going to use to kind of get an idea across. Maybe it's something we'll develop further in a program like Gravity Sketch or you know, Ortho Snap on. You know, maybe we'll maybe we'll do something with this kind of later. But right now it's essentially just getting from a sketch to a 3D object. Maybe it's something we can print and put on a table. Um, maybe it's just for a rendering for a presentation. I'm gonna grab all of these edges right here on the scale one. I like using scale for transformations because it makes nice smooth stuff. Whereas move a lot kind of tends to get a little chattery sometimes. I'm gonna do the same up here. Grab all of this. 
scale one and I'm going to scale this right in line because I want to kind of pull that in a little bit like that. And I'm not quite catching this, this arc back here, so I'm going to double click this whole edge. And then I'm going to scale one in this direction. There we go. And then I'm going to pull this one back out. And that'll give me that. I'm missing this little tuck under. That's okay right now because I can always add an edge and pull that in. In fact, let's do that. So I'm going to double click this and I'm going to add an edge. I'm going to do this in box mode. I like adding edges in box mode. Actually, I like doing most of my modeling in box mode because it's easier to keep track of it. And then I'm going to double click this and flatten it out. I don't like how angly that is. And then we'll just adjust this to follow the shape that we were looking for to start with. We even have an opportunity here where we might be able to like sneak that detail in. You know, like that. Maybe we start sneaking around that and see if we can figure out how to get that in. But the key is we want to keep this light. We don't want to add, 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 add. We don't want to just add a million edges. We want to keep this light. In fact, we may even come to a point in here where we delete some stuff because we got a little too ambitious too early. But that's the beauty of this system is you can kind of beat on it and it will allow you to kind of find the way along the way. Um, smooth mode and box mode, it, it's just off the tab key. So if you hit the tab key, it will allow you to be able to switch from smooth mode to box mode. And I model in box mode because the smooth mode is kind of one of those things that if you're Smooth mode is nice and clean, or if your box mode is nice and clean, your smooth mode kind of happens automatically. Um, whereas if your box mode is a mess, um, you'll run into errors and stuff on your smooth mode that, that are, are kind of difficult to figure out and difficult to solve. And so you can see that we've got a little, you know, a little discrepancy between here and the drawing which we can, we can refine. So I do most of my modeling in box mode, and then I do just a little bit of refinement in smooth mode and that he tends to keep everything pretty well organized. If you do all of your modeling in smooth mode, it's super easy to get your your uh, your control cage really out of whack and and that's you know not super ideal. So this is actually kind of a, a, a sharp step in here. So I actually need another edge in here on top of the one that I just added because I don't have enough information to add that step. So now I have now I have three, right? One, two, three, which means I can make the transition. So if I take this and pull it in, and I can take this and tuck this up like this, and then that gives me the information I need in order to make that transition. If I switch back to smooth mode. All right. Also gives me the opportunity to start thinking about like, do I want to try and tuck this detail in here? So if we go to shaded mode, it's a little early to be thinking about the details, but it's just sitting there staring me in the face. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. So let's grab this. Control click the two faces. I'm going to go to perspective view. I'm just going to extrude this in, and it's going to be a kind of a gross, a gross uh, detail, but we'll we'll refine it a little bit. So let's go back to shaded or to wireframe, and let's say let's take this edge and this edge. I'm just going to stitch those, and I have a hotkey set up for stitch. If you wondered how I did that. The command is to stitch.
and it's got a little slider you can decide the default is to the middle um, but it's got a little slider so that you can pick where you want it to actually end up you can slide that back and forth okay so now let's take a look at that and see if that gives us kind of a little bit what we were looking for looks like it could still use a little refinement And if, it find, if we find out that this is just too early and that we made a mess of it, we can always just delete this face and bridge it back in. So we could delete all of this stuff and then just bridge from this edge to this edge and put it back in. But I think that's, I think that's going to kind of work out. We'll see. I kind of don't like this edge. Maybe it's this edge I don't like. Maybe what we need to do is instead of going that way, maybe what we need to do is add some edges or add some points. And I'm going to just snap a new edge in here like that and then delete this space. And you can see that that now takes that weird triangular thing and turns it into a quad structure, which gives us much more control over that detail. And then we can slide this edge in and out to kind of clean that up. I think I'm going to do the same thing up here. I think that's you know, the plan. So, um, so this allows us to have a lot more control over this detail. We might even be able to delete this piece. Let's see. I like that better. And then we can determine the sharpness by whether we pull this up or down. All right, and because we made that change on that side, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete this side. We can work with symmetry on, but it's kind of a little early for that still. So let's go to the top view and let's clean up our profile a little bit. So we might want to get rid of that to smooth it out. Maybe not. It's a little less tortured. This edge. Let's that edge. So I mentioned that it might have been a little early to put that detail in. Um, it. It kind of was because now we're having to fight it in order to get, you know, the refinement of our shape, but that's all right. We can, we can manage. By the way, I, I'm not a footwear designer. I did a guitar demo a long time ago and somebody was like, that's not how you make guitars. And I'm like, like well, good for me. <laughs> I have no idea what, I have no idea how to make guitars. I have no idea how to make ski boots. I've never made one before. So there you have it. You know what? I don't like how this detail is causing me to have to fight this thing. So let's 
Let's do this. Let's take it out. I'm going to just stick this back, stick this edge back in here. And then I'm going to take out, uh, let's see, take out, I'm going to take out these edges. I just don't like what it's doing. And then let's take out that edge and that edge. And then let's connect these two back together. There we go. That kind of puts us back a little bit back where we were. And then we'll figure out how to do that detailing later. I just didn't like what that was doing to the, to the part. Another reason to keep this simple, you know, you can kind of like start to see when it, when things are getting a little out of control and then you don't have to fight to get them to come back. You can kind of just go and dispatch the things that are, are causing you issues, um, which is one of the nice things about 3D modeling. Can't do that in real life, but you can do it in 3D modeling. <laughs> All right, let's mirror this over and just take a look and see what we've got. And if we mirror that, and then if we go to box mode and we grab this and join, back here, that gives us something to that effect. And let's clean this shape up a little bit. All right, that's almost something that you could put a foot in, maybe. It's one of the nice things about having everybody's mic muted. I can't hear the laugh here. <laughs> can't hear people sitting there groaning and going, oh my God, what are you doing? <laughs> it's okay. I don't think my ego can take it. Um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about the bottom of this thing. And we've got this giant butt back here. Let's fix that. Let's move this whole thing, which is what we could do like that. There we go. Let's get a wireframe. Let's try and get somewhere back to where our sketch was. All right, let's see how horrible this has gotten. That's all right. It's a little flat in the back, but. So one downside of working across the center line is unless I throw a reflect on this, which I could, I still think it's a little early for that, but I kind of tend to do a lot of hacking first and then try and clean it up later. You may have a different system and that's okay. All right, I think we're getting something that's not absolutely positively horrific now. A little bit still. I'm kind of chasing that back and forth. You'll see me switch back and forth from wireframe to shaded. That's a lot of the time that's just to be able to select edges versus faces. All right, so we're pretty close here. I'm gonna punch this toe back just a little bit. And I'm gonna call that good for sake of time. What are we got a half hour in? All right, let's talk about these blocks at the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put an edge right at the beginning and right at the end of both of those. And then what that's going to do is give me an opportunity to be able to just use an edge to extrude out of that. If I go from here to here, and then I double click in between, I'm going to start dragging the scale handle. And then I'm going to hold down shift. And then I'm going to hold down command. And what that's going to do is that is going to now start to extrude 
that edge out. And I'm going to let go of everything. And then I'm going to click, start dragging, shift, command. I'm going to drag out a second one. And then I'm going to start dragging this handle. And I'm going to hold down command. And then I'm going to hold down command again. And what that allows you to do is to just go ahead and block that thing in like that. Right? And I probably went a little too much. It looks like a kiss beat now. In fact, this second one probably isn't necessary, but um, tuck it up here. Let me get that box in there. We got something weird going on up there that I need to figure out, but I'll do that when I get back into this. Looks like that. So that is our front little connector, and that's way fat, so let's fix that. All of this stuff. I'm going to scale one from zero, and then I'm going to just bring that. And then I'm going to take this edge, and move that in. You guys are all like, "Yeah, it's very clear. You've never designed a ski." <laughs> I wasn't lying. <laughs> oh, my enthusiasm. For this stuff is not always matched by my talent. <laughs> All right, I'm going to reloc relocate the gumball to here. And then I'm going to use the scale handle. I'm actually going to hold down command and I'm going to drag the scale handle out because it was really short. And then I'm going to grab it and then I'm going to use it to scale that edge back to where it needs to be. And then this point. Let's tuck these guys in a little bit. I can already see that I may have flown a little too close to the sun for an hour, but we'll figure it out. All right, I'm going to increase this point. And then let's do the same thing back here. I'm going to grab this one and this one. Double click. <clears throat> let's do it in box mode. Start dragging a scale handle. Doesn't matter which one. All right. Hold down shift. Hold down command. And we're going to come out. We're going to do the same thing. Let go. Start dragging shift command. And then we're going to start dragging down using the control dot. And then one more. And let's see if we're anywhere close. I'm not keeping a good eye on the on the chat, but anything. Let's see. Workflow, general rule, sub -B modeling that you're building one closed surface rather than adding the steel section as a separate element in Rhino. You can, uh, that's a very good question actually. Um, so I am actually building this as one piece, but there is absolutely no reason why you couldn't um, simply build the, like the, the, the footbed part and then build the barrel part and then build the bottom parts and then convert to NURBS and merge that stuff all together. There's absolutely no reason why you couldn't do that. Um, in fact, I toyed with doing that a little bit. Um, and we may, we may get there, but I'm trying to get the lower at least in one piece. And then we'll, we can talk about like, whether that was a good idea or a bad idea. <laughs> All right, I'm going to delete 
one half of this and just because I made a change, so I'm going to just delete this. I could reflect it, but I just find that this is easier. This just kind of matches my nerves workflow. So here, and then grab everything and join it. And then that gives us kind of this lower. Now, we need to close the bottom of this thing up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge this, and go to box mode, bridge this one and this one. And then I'm going to do it with two sections. So if I bridge and I do it with two sections, I'll get a center line. And then I can just stitch these two. And I'm actually going to crease this edge. Because I want that to stay fairly stiff. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Oops, right on bridge. I'm using the world's worst mouse. I hate this thing. I'm not going to tell you who makes it because that's not cool, but every time I use this thing, I want to throw it in the trash. <laughs> All right, so let's bridge these pieces together. Like my travel bag. This thing rattles around in the bottom of my travel bag and it just can't do its job. All right, so now I can bridge from here to here. Whole thing about bridge is everything has to match. So it's got to be two to two, one to one. All that kind of stuff. Now, in this direction, I have got one, two, three edges. So that means I actually have to come up and get enough edges to be able to attach to everything. So this one is going to go here, that one's going to go there, and that one's going to go there. So I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to stitch this, this point, and this point. I'm going to stitch it. I'll just use that location. Stitch from here to here. Oops. Like that. And then I'm probably going to just crease this edge. I don't normally use creases, by the way. I normally use bevels um, because bevels give you nice soft edges, but I'm, I'm going to try and go fast here, so I'm actually going to achieve these creases. So I'm going to crease this one as well. And cheating, creases are, is not cheating. Creases is a totally valid way to work. It gives you nice sharp edges. These actually will fill it if you convert to nerves. These will fill it nicely. So if you're, if you're planning on going to nerves later, that actually is a good strategy is to is to um, crease your stuff. I might take this one out. Ooh, that's a little crazy. Ah, there's a crease chasing through here that I did not want. The thick ones are the creases. There we go. Let's just pull this in a little bit. All right, that may be a little aggressive as far as the size of that thing, so let's scale it in. But let's call that good. I'm going to crease the, these edges to get my sharpness back. And I don't really worry too much about the other side because, again, I'm going to just I'm either going to reflect it or do, I'm going to do something with it as far as getting my sound feedback, back, but I don't really care too much at this point. So let's bridge these two, same thing. And I need to count again. So I've got one, two, three in here. So I need one more. 
can always delete it if I don't need it. So let's just stitch them up. So I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to use my slider to put it there. I'm going to put this one here. And it looks like I did add one that I didn't need. I'm just going to double click it and delete it. And this face, you see a thick edge on the edge down here. That face kind of didn't get put in correctly. So I'm going to just bridge it back with one, one, and say apply. And that gives us, oh, well, it looks like there was actually one in there hiding. All right. I'm going to make these in just a little bit. <laughs> there we go. And this edge. That edge all needs to be creased. <clears throat> this is one of the reasons I, I tend to stay away from creases is because they can behave a little bit unpredictably. Um, what I usually end up doing is I'll build a crease and then I'll go back and replace it with a bevel. Um, but for the time being, I'm going to call this okay. All right, so that gives us our lower. And the shape of this, we could fuss the shape of this a little bit. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time getting too crazy over that, but this is a general... You know, generally speaking, we are we are kind of generally ski booty in shape here. So I'm going to call that a win, and then let's move on to the upper. So there's one couple couple of tricks I want to show you as we as we get into this. So let's let's make a layer, and I'm going to just call this lower, and let's just put this on the lower for right now. We're going to change the object layer, and I'm going to just lock it. May even may even hide it. Nah, let's keep it open so that we can see it. And then let's let's look at this cuff up here. And there's a couple of ways that we can do this. We could start from from what we have, which is, and I'm going to unlock this so we could do that. If I shift control drag and grab these surfaces, and I start dragging, and I tap the option command, see how that plus sign shows up? That's going to break off those surfaces and give me a copy of that. My miss looks like I missed the ones in the back. So let's grab, let's make sure that we get all of those. So we're going to drag, we're going to tap option on the Mac keyboard, and that's going to break off and give us that section, that, that cup. I'm going to put it back kind of where I found it. And then I'm going to just shift drag scale it just a little bit, and that's going to give us the offset for our cup. So now I can lock, let's put this on the default. Change out the player, let's lock that. Now we can just work on this without having to worry about this being selected. So let's go back to wireframe and let's do a little bit of, of moving this around. So I'm gonna grab this edge up here and let's pull this all the way up and we don't have enough information here, but I, again, I want to keep this as simple as I possibly can when we're doing our basic layouts. Because what I want to do is I want to pull stuff farther than I think I need to, as opposed to adding edges that may make my life difficult later. Right? So I'm going to try and get as much as I can out of what I have before I start trying to add stuff. Now, this has a taper in the middle, so I definitely don't have enough there. So I'm going to add one more right in the middle. And then I'm going to I'm going to edit it with scale. I'm going to shift drag and you can see how that starts to tuck in. All right, so the top of the cuff on this thing has a shape to it that you can't really see because it's tucked behind that conveniently drawn strap that hides the front of this cuff. <laughs> but that gives us a general upper lower kind of one thing relating to another, right? 
Now, we can't see the thickness of this part down here, so I'm not going to worry about adding thickness to that, but we will be able to see the thickness of this piece up here. So I might add a little bit of, of you know, of shape to that. The other thing is this cuff doesn't, you know, this cuff laps over itself. And so what it really does, it's not just a circle with a slot in the front. It's actually uh, a piece that has, um, you know, these overlapping elements. And so like, this buckle and this and this actually are made up of like three straps. So if we go to the front view and we look at this in wireframe, we're going to need a strap here. We're going to need a strap here and we're going to need a strap here. Now we could fake this. If it was just a rendering, we could fake it, right? It's not a big deal. We could just, we could just fake that in there and, and nobody's really going to care. Um, but if we wanted to try and print this or if we wanted to try and do something a little bit more interesting with it than just um, just making a rendering. Then what we might we might want to um, I'm just trying to get this S curve back here. We might want to um, actually add a little bit more detail so that we could get that shape dialed in. And so I think what I'm going to do. Let me hide this one for now, the lower, and let's focus on what this is so i'm going to actually slide this strap this this edge down a little bit and then i'm going to insert another edge down here where that strap would be and then i'm going to do this in box mode so that i can see what i'm doing i'm going to slide that up i'm going to put another edge in here Oops, that slide. I'm going to insert. So two kind of two straps that kind of wrap around here, and that gives us enough information that we could actually put those in now. And so what I'm going to do? Let's go to shaded. I'm going to actually delete these faces and then I'm going to select this edge again and I'm going to start dragging on this seaplane waffle but then hold down command and that's going to give me that's going to put that back basically what I did was I'm, I wanted to pull this seam apart then we can come in here and say okay this is where a strap is going to go right so in the front view, right view, left view, left view, I'm going to pull this out like that. And then we need two, three in order to be able to wrap it around the corner. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Let's get a little bit more space in here. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go one, two, three, and then I'm going to start wrapping this around like that. And let's get it a little closer. These seaplane waffles are really nice because you can kind of use them and know that you're not getting too far out of shape Oops. if you're in 3D, 3D space. So I want that to kind of feel like it's fairly close to that, but not, not violate it like it's doing here. So I'm going to poke this one back in a little bit. And there's cleverer ways to do this, but I'm showing you the, I want to try and keep it as anvil simple as I possibly can. There's ways that you can project a sub D onto another sub D. You can project points onto a surface. You can, you know, there's all sorts of like clever things that you can do, but I'm trying to show you the least clever way of doing this so that it's very simple. 
All right, so let's go into box mode or smooth mode and just see what we've got. And it looks like we've got a little poke through here. So let's just tuck that behind. And let's bring this back and see how it relates. And in that case, it's, it's relating kind of well enough that I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to say, okay. Because like I said, we've got a lot of ground to cover. And if there's a mess over here, I may just leave it because we can only see one side of this at a time. And I'm going to just say that this is a concept, you know, sketch model, something like that. All right. If I did want these corners to be sharp, <clears throat> I can just crease the corner and that brings that that sharpness of that corner back and this is something that like if we were to convert to NURBS we would probably want to roll that you know roll that edge and knock it off but um, let's add a little bit of thickness to this because we can see it and so we're going to do offset sub D and we're going to flip to go to the inside and I have no idea what kind of units we're looking at here so let's just say let's say 0.1 and that gives us, you know, the plastic thickness. Now this is all, um, this is all creased. And so if you don't want that, you can just pick the whole thing and say uncrease. And that'll make it soft. But I actually like the, I actually like the sharpness of the creases um, a little bit better. Now for the inners, what we can do is we can steal, we can steal this geometry again. And so I'm going to grab, actually, I'm going to do this before I thicken it. Um, let's grab, let's grab this ring and I'm going to drag up tap option and get a copy. And then I'm going to scale this in a little bit and I'm going to tuck it down. And then I'm going to go to the front view and then let's lock this. And then let's start you know, putting our liner in here. And to get the thickness and the puff out of this, we'll just do the exact same thing we did before. We're just going to, we're just going to make a different offset for it. I'm going to scale this up again or drag it up again and tap alt again. And this is going to give me my, my next section of liner. And then there's a, a little puff on top of this that we'll get. Let's add this thickness first. So let's uh, sub D. Where are you? I just used you two seconds ago. Offset. Duh. There we go. Um, I'll go ahead and offset that one out, and let's do let's do point two five, and let's do that and then let's i'm going to isolate that so that's the only thing on there it does not does not hide the things that are locked by the way when it's locked it's just locked so i'm going to uncrease that and then i'm going to grab this entire inside piece and i'm going to just shift drag to scale that in a little bit and see how that gets much puffier and there's going to be a lot of intersecting and you know stuff in here going on that I'm not going to just I'm not going to worry too much about it. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So B offset. So B um, I'm going to flip that and go inwards. I'm going to do 25 in there. I'm going to do the same thing. Grab this inside and I'm going to shift drag. Isolate. Drag the whole thing. Uncrease. And then this edge right, this edge right here, I'm going to add, um, I'm going to add an edge underneath it. Let's do that in box mode. Come on now. There we go. Let's insert an edge. I'm going to put one here. Come back there 
I'm gonna put another one under here. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can grab this and scale it out that way and out that way. And that gives me my, that like little puff on top of that. And I can control it with you know, this one, depending on whether it's got a lot of puff or a little bit of puff, but that makes it look nice and soft. And then we'll bring everything back down the front view. And kind of missed our shape a little bit. We're doing 10 o'clock. So about an hour. How's everybody doing? Am I boring you to death or is this still still interesting? Because this is this is the basic layout. Still good? All right, you guys are buttons for punishment. All right, so let's um, unlock and then let's talk about, let's call this done for now. I, we, could do a, we could do a cuff in here. In fact, let's, let's do a cuff just because it's a little bit dumb without it. So let's grab these two. I'm gonna pull them back, tap option and steal them. And then, I'm going to grab these two edges and just extrude up and up like that. And I'm going to grab the center and push it forward. And go to the front view. And let's drag the cuff up here. Again, I want to I want to drag I want to pull things farther instead of adding you know more detail and let's offset this and again there's tons of collisions and you know there's all sorts of mess in here but um, we could sort that out later and let's grab this thing isolate increase everything. And then let's grab these interfaces. And I'm going to pull these in just to make it nice and chunky. And if we go to the front view. I'm a little off my sketch, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sweat it too much. We can drag select all of this stuff and scale one in this direction, get a little closer. One of the reasons you want to just keep this stuff simple, 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 is it's easy to make big modifications like that. All right. So this is a little, a little lumpy in here. And if I was, if I was doing this for a client, I would certainly take the time to go and delumpify it. Um, let's add our thickness back to here. And we're going to do that in, and we did that like what, 1.15 or something like that. And that one I am going to leave creased, so that gives us our gives us our basic look. And so if we go to rendered mode, we can see that it's you know we've got a bunch of stuff colliding and overlapping and all that kind of stuff. I'm not I we can go straighten that stuff out, but essentially the money shot for this is going to be our rendering from the side view like this. So let's talk about how to put the buckles in here, and then I think we may convert to NURBS, throw a few materials on it, and then try and get you know one decent kind of peek at it but i don't want to i don't want to beat you guys to death here so um let's bring the buckle back so i built this buckle and let's look at this for a minute and basically the way that i built this is it's just a mechanism and it's built dead flat and i added all the details and all the stuff in here but what happens is these actually kind of wrap around the model and so I put a backbone on this, which is just this surface. And we're going to use flow along surf in order to make this work. But in order to do that, let's bring everything back. I need to kind of figure out what this curve is. And so we're going we're gonna to make a little bit of a mess here for a second. And, and I'm, I'm hoping this will work. In my mind, it works great. We'll see whether, we'll see whether it works in real life or not. So I'm going to take, I'm going to just project a curve 
all the way through this thing, kind of like that. So we'll go through kind of something like that. And then I'm gonna just project both of these onto this sub -D. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna isolate just those curves. And what I wanna do is I wanna break these up. I'm gonna explode all this because I'm just gonna delete a lot of this into kind of logical segments. And so what I want is probably that, and then probably so this and this and this, I'm gonna join that. And then this one, that one, those are not gonna join, but uh, let's make a layer called keepers. Let's take this. Let's stop screwing that up. And then let's take this and we're just going to change this layer. And change it to the layer. I'm going to make these red just so I can keep an eye on them. I hate modeling in colors, but I'm going to do like that. Huh? All right, there we go. And let's do the same thing down here. I'm gonna grab like these. Because what I need to do, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm trying to identify some curves that kind of represent the, the shape of the, the object. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a surface out of those that I'm gonna use as a flow target. And if you haven't used flow along surface, stick around because you're going to like this. Basically, what it allows you to do is to model things flat and then apply them onto an object. But what we need to do is get some surfaces first. Change object layer. I'm going to lock that. And then I can drag select all this and delete it. And what this does is this gives me a basic kind of layout for what my curve is going to be. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a uh, interpolate point curve, which is this guy. And I'm going to snap to here, and then I'm going to kind of snap to here, and then I'm going to snap to there. And that is going to give me a basic shape that should more or less follow the shape of the model. And I may, I may be a little off, but it should get me close. Actually, I'm going to do that one again. So I'm going to snap here, here, right at the end, so I know that it's going to follow that and I'm not here. Does that kind of make sense what I'm doing? Something got crazy there. kind of bridging that gap between those two surfaces. And now what I can do is I can select objects. Oops, got to unlock it. Select objects, there you go. And delete that and then what I can do is I can take these two curves and I can lock them together, all right? And that gives me a surface that is gonna represent about where I want that buckle to wrap on. And I'm gonna rebuild both of these so that they're even um, single span surfaces. I'm gonna like, uh, let's try five. Let's do. No, I have to do six actually. No, not fifty-six. Six. All right. So let's rebuild that. So that's going to be our target surfaces. So let's bring our buckle. Um. And let's grab just this and just this. Uh, 
All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this buckle and we're going to flow it onto this surface. And the first thing that we need to double check is we need to double check the direction of all of these surfaces. So I'm going to use the direction command DIR. And basically what I want to make sure is that my red, green, and whites are all facing in the same direction. And in this case, they're not, right? So you can see that the red is facing down here and the green is facing right and the normals are facing out in different directions. So let's fix that. So on this surface, this surface we can see that we're red up, green right, white back. And on this one, we need to swap the, we need to swap the U. So we're red up and then we need to flip it and so now those two match, right? So if I run the dirt command, red up, green right, white back, right? Now we need to do the same thing up here. So in this case, we're green up, red left, and white back. So we need to actually swap the UVs and then we need to change that. So we're red up, green right, white back. So now all these surfaces, the, the UV direction of all of these surfaces match. So what I can do is I can say, this is, the, this is the remote control surface and this is the target surface. And so when I flow along surf, I can grab, this is the object that I'm gonna flow, right? This, this thing. And then the base surface, select near a corner. I'm gonna select near this corner. Well, because we set these up to match, this corner and that corner match. So I'm going to click here and it's going to think for a second and then it's going to flow that buckle along that surface. And we're going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to use this as our target and that as our target. And it's going to think for a second. It's going to flow that buckle around it. Now I can get rid of this. Actually, those are all in the same layer. So let's just hide all of this. And then that's going to bring it all back. Do this, do this. I can delete these now. I don't need them anymore. And this, I'm just going to hide it for now. Actually, I can delete it. It doesn't really matter. And then now I've kind of got this stuff is kind of like, approximately in place. So now I can I can kind of move it around and fake it and do whatever I want in order to make it look like it's kind of supposed to be there. Like that. And that gives us that gives us our buckles. And we would do the same thing for this these two down here. Um, in, in to make that one. Actually that one actually would be easier. So let's do that one. That cool everybody like that yeah yeah mind blown yeah flow along surface is amazing especially if you're a jeweler if you have to do like vines and roses and you know barbed wire and things like that and you have to try and wrap it around wrap it around a ring don't don't wrap it around the ring model it flat and then flow it onto the ring it, it'll make your life so much easier tire treads too don't model tire treads radially model tire treads flat and then uh and then um just uh just map them on all right so i'm gonna do the same thing down here i'm gonna project the curve here here actually watch this i'm gonna cheat and just do it out of one curve like that and then i'm gonna project this on to this and then i'm gonna isolate Come over here and let's explode. And I'm going to delete these curves. See, anybody who bailed out at the hour mark didn't get that lovely payoff. All right, so let's join. By the way, if I'm killing you and you're bored to tears, please feel, you're not going to have my feelings if you want to get like it. <laughs> uh, once you've floated along surfaces, it's still linked, like uh, change target surface. 
Yes, and we'll do some adjustments on this one because I forgot to mention that. Um, let's just rebuild this. Actually, I'm gonna just loft them, sorry. Um, let's loft these first. And that's messy, but we're gonna rebuild it. Is it a polysurface? Ah, it's polysurface, we don't want a polysurface. Let's rebuild them first. Um, let's do it, let's do it at six and five. So rebuild. Now we're gonna loft. Ooh, that got a little out of shape, didn't it? That's not enough. Now, same thing. We have to look at the dir command, and we have to um, decide what these things are supposed to be doing. And in this case, I think we're okay because we're red up, green right, and we are white. Hard to tell, but looks like they're looks like they're white back for both of them. So I think we're actually okay. So let's bring our buckle back. Isolate this and let's do flow long surf. And I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to do this with history turned on. So let's do this. We're going to select, and I don't want to select back. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. And it looks like I had my direction set incorrectly so let's take a look again and double check we are red up green right white back and on this one we are red up green right white back that should have worked so let's pick this and let's well let's check it in this corner Oh, flow on surface is the command, not just flow. There's a flow, but it's just for curves. Here, we want to use copy if we're going to do history. Here, there we go. That flowed correctly. Now, let's say that this is too long. See how this is like really, really long? What if I do this? If I pick this and I say scale one, and I snap from here and I go, and I'm changing the relationship of the object to the base surface. Watch what happens. History is going to update and make that thing shorter. If I move it up or down on the, on the base surface, it's going to move up or down on this base surface. But I'm going to actually make this even longer because I think that this is like, actually like that that's crawling back towards the other side. See how that just came right over? And that makes sense. That looks realistic, right? That's kind of where it's supposed to be. So now I'm going to, I'm going to purge history because I don't want that to affect this anymore. And so let's flow along again because I want to do this one. And I want to go from here to here. And it looks like my direction's jacked up. So let's check it again. Sometimes it's just a matter of picking a different corner. So red up, green right. And we are back. So that should work. So let's do go along this. And then let's try picking this corner now and this corner down here. Sometimes it just gets confused about the corner that you picked and stuff like that. And again, because I did it with history and because I did it with copy, I can adjust this, right? And it will crawl, you know, farther up one side or down the other. So if I scale one, I bring this in, it's gonna get longer. 
right? And if I bring it out, it's going to get shorter. So I can adjust it. I can also do stuff like this. Like if I don't like where it's positioned on that, I can grab this, watch this, and I can drag it in relationship to the surface and it's going to crawl along the surface in the other direction. So you can actually move it around on the surface. Cool. Delete that. Fills my history, which is fine. Bring everything back. And hide this. Save that to the end. It's a little gift for those of you who are uh, willing to sit and do all of this. All right. So in an hour and 20 minutes, we ended up with something that we could actually start to throw a few materials on. And I built a couple of materials on here, but I'm on a I'm on an old Intel Mac, and it might be asking a lot to try and throw a rendering on here. But um, let's see. Yeah, this is very cool. We would, as we have said, could we have done this in 1985? Um, in Maya, maybe, but you wouldn't have been able to print it or do anything with it. So, um, all right. So let's just see what's going on here. I think I think the buckles actually have materials on it already. Let's see. And I haven't saved this file. That's bold. So let's throw a few materials on here. Um, let's do this, and then let's make plastic, it's black, and then we're going to make this very frosted, and I'm just going to assign this to these up here. And I'm going to say that we have the basis of a ski boot. Now, if we wanted to get some, some, you know, we could add the rest of the detailing and all that kind of stuff, decals, all that kind of stuff. If we want to do a surface break on this thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a copy. Um, I'm going to call this sub B lower. I'm going to make a copy of this copy object to layer, and then I'm gonna hide this because I'm gonna do a two nerves here. And I'm gonna delete my input objects. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna convert this guy to nerves. And then what that'll give me the ability to be able to do is, and then I'm gonna hide my ISOs here. Uh, very intrusive. And then what I can do is I can come in here with a curve and I can just, because this is nerves, right? I can do anything I want, just like a normal Rhino model. So I'm gonna draw my material breakthrough here. Oh, you awful mouse. And then I'm going to just do a simple split. Split this with a curve. Now I've got a top and a bottom. I'm gonna assign black to this down here. And then we go into rendered mode. And we've got the detail. You know, we could make a secondary color break in there. We could start breaking it up and adding decals. We could start, you know, there's a lot of refinements that we could do um, if we want to make this a four hour video instead of a three hour video <laughs> or, in the, or a one hour video, I guess. Um, but the generally, you know, general speaking, an hour and 25 minutes, we are here. Um, now I did cheat and I built the pre built buckles. Now, one of the things that you notice here, notice the difference in the size of the buckles. That is because the size of the, of the, the underlying surface 
was different from location to location. So if I was going to do this for real, I would make sure that the dimensions of all of those strips that we were projecting the object onto were the same size. Or I would go in and individually adjust each one as I placed it on here. But again, you know, this is going to be something that we're going to throw out as a rendering. Maybe we're going to throw it in a VR headset. Maybe we're, you know, whatever. Whatever the thing is, it's a concept model for an hour. If you want to stay for the 10 hours video, we'll get into this in a lot more detail. But um, but this is kind of where we're at and what we're doing. So um, any questions with that so far? I'm going to just save this because um, tempting fate. If not, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it here um, and say that this is this is our this is our done spot. And, you know, there's a lot of things that we could adjust. We could pull these out so that we could set these down so they're not hovering and all that kind of stuff. But if we position it in a way that you can't really tell, um, you know, maybe we do something like that. Maybe we do have to pull these out because those are really diving. Let's undive those a little bit. There we go. Let's do that. All right, that's a that's a reasonable facsimile for an hour and twenty five minutes worth of unrehearsed demo. It keeps getting in Stop it. Shut it. All right. Any questions? If not, I think we're going to call it, and I think you have been you have been valiant audience members, and I appreciate you sticking with me from that. Um, any questions? We'll hit it. If not, I'll let you get on with your day. Awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. I'm Kyle Houchins. This is Getting Started Rhino for Mac. Don't make that stuff. Thanks.